Hello everyone. Today's topic for the video is Andrew's six keys to normal occlusion. The six keys are the molar and terarch relationship, mesiodistal crown angulation, labiolingual crown inclination, absence of rotations, tight contacts, and curve of SPI. We will be discussing them one by one now. Key one is the interarch relationship. It further has seven points. There are three points for molar, two points for premolar, for canine and incisors. One, mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar falls in the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. Two, the distal marginal ridge of the maxillary first molar occludes with the mesial marginal ridge of the mandibular second molar. These two points were on the buccal side, the third point is from palatal side. The third point is, the mesiolingual cusp of the maxillary first molar occludes with the central fossa of the mandibular first molar. The next two points are for premolar. The fourth point is, the buccal cusps of the maxillary premolars have cusp embrasure relationship with the mandibular premolars. The fifth point is that lingual cusps of maxillary premolars have a cusp fossa relationship with the mandibular premolars. Then is the canine. The maxillary canine has a cusp embrasure relationship with the mandibular canine and first premolar, and the upper canine tip is slightly mesial. Last point of the first key is related to incisors. The maxillary incisors overlap the mandibular incisors and the midlines coincide. The next key, that is key 2 is, mesiodistal crown angulation or tip. Crown angulation means that the gingival portion of the long axis of all crowns was more distal than the incisal portion. The degree of crown tip is the angle between the long axis of the crown, as viewed from the labial or buccal surface, and a line bearing 90 degrees from the occlusal plane. Crown tip is expressed in degrees, plus or minus. A plus reading, when the gingival portion of the long axis of the crown is distal to the incisal portion. A minus reading, when the gingival portion of the long axis of the crown is mesial to the incisal portion. To better understand, let's see this picture. The first pick is ideal where there is positive crown angulation. The fourth pick is not ideal, here the crown angulation is negative. Next is key 3. It is labiolingual crown inclination. Crown inclination is determined by the resulting angle between a line 90 degrees to the occlusal plane and a line tangent to the middle of the labial or buccal clinical crown. The crown of maxillary incisors are more positively inclined relative to a line 90 degrees to the occlusal plane. Consistent patterns see in most maxillary centrals having a positive inclination and mandibular incisors having a slight negative inclination. When the inclination is buccal to the 90-degree line, the inclination is negative. The fourth key to normal occlusion is that the teeth should be free of undesirable rotations. An example of the problem is seen in a superimposed molar outline showing how the molar, if rotated, would occupy more space than normal, creating a situation unreceptive to normal occlusion. The fifth key is that the contact points should be tight, no spaces. Those who have genuine tooth size discrepancies pose special problems, but in the absence of such abnormalities tight contact should exist. Key is flat curve of SPI. In normal occlusion, curve of SPI should be flat or should not exceed 1.5 mm. One more key was introduced later on. That is key 7 which states that there should be no Bolton's tooth size discrepancy.